Radio communications check. Fuel levels normal. Aerodynamics adjust. Tire pressure and temperatures adjusted. Crew ready on standby. <laughs> you diecast racing fans you're watching the finals of the pikes peak indy 500 well i don't know about you ep but i am so excited for the finals now i know there's been delays but hey this is colorado and we get weather oh yeah we sure do and we don't want those drivers out in the rain and the snow but for the crazy canuck he's been talking about the weather all week i think this guy is right at home those crazy canadians in today's race we have arlo blue line sneaky bob crazy canuck james ironbeard and and Ned Munson. Kicking off lap number one, sitting in our pole position is the real Crazy Canuck coming to us from Canada. And they're off. Drivers down the mountain, Ned Munson trying to squeeze out an early lead. Oh, overtaken by Crazy Canuck and Blue Line hot on his tail. First place, Crazy Canuck, second place, Blue Line, third place, Ned Munson. Out of the 270 turn, whoa, we have Blue Line now in the lead. How did he do that? Whoa! Blue Light takes a hit on the fence. Let's hope that doesn't mess up his alignment. Oh, come on, EP. Are you trying to hurt my feelings? I'm just stating the facts, that's all. I'm sure Blue Line is fine. That thing is built forward tough. As long as he doesn't go to Race City, I think he'll be just fine. Wait, what? Didn't he just... Uh, yeah, we're not going to talk about that. But take a look back on this replay. There's Blue Line making the pass right before the 270 turn. It looks like he took advantage of our new wider track here at Pikes Peak. And coming in through the last two turns, there it is. He takes out the fence. Boom! He came in like a wrecking ball. Now we have a huge hole in the town of Pikes Peak. Well, that's definitely going to leave a mark. And as we move into lap number two, sitting in the pole position is my favorite. Blue Line driving for Blue Line Racing. Hey, EP. Why don't you grab a pen and paper? Because you're going to need to take some notes. Oh, Elise, now you're just being gross. Well, don't you blink, EP. I'm betting on a new track record. Well, I'm betting that fence crash is going to level the playing field. Oh, yeah, he Oh, man, speaking of crashes, there goes the crazy Canuck right off the cliff. It looks like we have a Canadian cleanup on I-05. That's going to be one sticky mess. Oh, excuse me? And you said I was being gross. Well, don't you know? Don't I know what? Canadian cars don't run on tungsten or graphite. They run on that liquid gold. That's right, maple syrup. Huh. Well, that's new. Now take a look at that track time. 16.2 is fairly slow for Blue Line. However, he takes first yet again, earning himself a total of 12 points. These other drivers are going to need to pick it up if they want to challenge him for the title. I know you and I don't share the same love for Blue Line, but there are some facts. He's fast, and he wins tournaments. There's no denying that. Whoa, let's do a fact check here. Yes, he is fast, but wins tournaments? Where? Hello, Race City? Race City? That wasn't Blue Line, that was Big Six. He drives for Team Blue Line. It's not the same guy. Well, I beg to differ. Ugh, agree to disagree. Kicking off lap number three, sitting in the pole position is James Ironbeard, driving for Ironbeard Customs in that orange Indy car. And to his right is Blue Line, not Big Six. James Ironbeard trying to keep the pace, but Blue Line is way out in front of the pack. In the merge, Blue Line continues to increase his lead in front of the other drivers. They're doing their best to try and keep up. Whoa, and a long skid from Blue Line. I'm telling you, Elise, it is not the fastest car that wins the race. Slow and steady wins the race. Well, we'll just have to see about that. And take a look at that score, EP. Who's leading the pack? Yeah, that's right. It's Blue Line. Ugh, okay, enough. Blue Line is in the lead, but at least we have so many more laps to go. A total of 12, let's not forget. Anything can happen. I mean, take a look at this replay. Blue Line skids out, opening the door for the other three drivers to catch back up. I'm not questioning this guy's speed, but I am questioning his stability. 
Will it be his kryptonite? Oh, you didn't just compare him to Superman, did you? Oh, come on. Okay, fine. He's Superman and Arlo is Batman. All right, EP. As we move into lap number four, sitting in the pole position is Arlo, a.k.a. Batman. Let's see if he can beat the Man of Steel. Drivers making their way down the mountain. Arlo working his way up to the front, passing James Ironbeard into the merge. Arlo takes first place. Behind him, Sneaky Bob getting a little bit squirrely, causing trouble for the other three drivers. Arlo coming out of the 270 turn. Watch how Sneaky Bob is flying hot on the tail of Arlo. Can he hold it to the finish? First place, Arlo. Second place, Sneaky Bob. Third place, James Ironbeard. Well, at least there goes Blue Line, a.k.a. Superman's clean sweep as he takes fourth place in lap number four. <laughs> That's just one race, EP. I'm not worried at all. We have eight more laps to go, and look, he's still the group leader. All right, I've heard enough from Captain Obvious. Let's show a little bit of love to our other drivers. First of all, talking about Arlo holding the lead all the way to the finish, and look at Sneaky Bob in that yellow Indy car really challenging and pushing. If he had an open lane, he may have taken first. First place. As we wrap up lap number four, Curly in first place is Blue Line, second place Arlo, third place James Ironbeard. Kicking off lap number five, sitting in the pole position is Sneaky Bob, driving for Vapor Racing. And they're off. Arlo out to a quick early lead. Sneaky Bob trying to close the gap. Through the turn, Bob in the lead. In the merge, Bob takes first place, second place Arlo, third place James Ironbeard. Arlo getting squirrely out of the 270 turn. Bob drifts a mile. My goodness, this is not Tokyo Drift. With a strong lead, Sneaky Bob takes first place, second place Arlo, third place James Ironbeard, and another fourth place finish for Blue Line. And Ned Munson, two DNS up on the board. How did we miss that one? <laughs> really? You don't know? Anyway, take a look back on this replay. Whoa, somebody must have spilled some oil on the track. Blue Line is slipping and sliding. Coming through the 270 turn, Bob looking strong, followed by Arlo and James Ironbeard. And there's Ned Munson in the back. Hard to say what caused this DNF. Oh, it looks like he may have been tangled up with a crazy Canuck. Gives him a little bump, but takes away a lot of speed, getting stuck on that turn. Well, Ned Munson's going to need to pick it up if he wants to catch any of these drivers in this tournament. This is not his day. Kicking off lap number six. Let's see if he has a chance. Ned Munson in the pole position, driving for tiny track cars. Drivers making their way down the mountain. Bob and Arlo out to an early lead. Ned trying to close the gap. Into the merge, Bob takes first place. Second place goes to Arlo. Oh, and third place goes to Crazy Canuck. Ned Munson lost three positions. That is incredible. Sneaky Bob leads the pack down to the finish. First place, Bob. Second place, Arlo. And third place goes to Crazy Canuck. Oh, wow. Hey, look at that. We have a three-way tie between Blue Line, Sneaky Bob, and Arlo. That's incredible. Oh, incredible indeed, and so entertaining. These three drivers showed up to compete, and they are not holding back. And with a three-way tie, it is anyone's game as we move into the halftime show. Oh, yeah. EP, do I have a surprise for you? Wait, a surprise? What is it? I'm not giving you any spoilers. you just going to have to wait and see. Come on, Elise. You know I hate surprises. I'll give you one hint. Guess he's coming home. Welcome to the Indy 500 Halftime Show. Righteous Felon Craft Jerky presents Cyberdyne Chaos.
Podcast Racing. Wow, that was definitely a surprise. Why didn't you tell me that Ted was coming to Pikes Peak? Oh, well, I'm glad you loved it. But it's not my fault that you didn't know. Ted specifically asked me not to tell you because he wanted to be the one to surprise you. Aw, oh, Ted, do you have any idea how long I've been waiting for you to come home? I'm back, baby. It feels good to be home. Well, that's fine with me, but what about Cyberdyne Chaos? I hope there's room in the garage because they're all here to stay. Well, I guess we're going to have to street park the Ferrari. As we move into lap number seven, this is a second chance for every driver to put down some points on the board. Sitting in the pole position is the real Crazy Canuck. Crazy Canuck and Blue Line pushing to the front. Through the turns into the merge, Crazy Canuck takes first place. Blue Line up on the sidewall. That's going to hurt his speed. Third place, Ned Munson. Out of the 270 turn, watch out, here comes Blue Line. He is right on the tail of Crazy Canuck. Oh, we have contact right before the finish line. Crazy Canuck barely pulls it off, taking first place. And that's what a good driver is all about. Pushing and fighting all the way to the finish, Blue Line never gives up. Yeah, but he didn't take first place. Take a look at Crazy Canuck. He didn't give up. He was ripping through the track. And as soon as Blue Line caught up, he didn't give him any opportunity to make a pass. Do you smell something burning? Uh-uh. Don't you dare look at me. I had nothing to do with that. I don't know about you guys, but that smells like burning graphite. Warning, warning. Not Ned Munson. He's really stinking it up. And as we move into lap number eight, sitting in the pole position is Blue Line, currently our group leader. Let's see if he can continue to lead the pack. Well, just as I suspected, Blue Line already out in the front with an early lead into the merge. He takes first place. Second place, a battle between Crazy Canuck and James Ironbeard, and the Crazy Canadian makes it. No one even close to Blue Line as he makes it through these last two turns, flying down through the track. 13.2, that is a fast track time. Hmm, very interesting. Who is this so-called Blue Line? Oh, Ted, I suspected you were going to ask. Some people say he's the best driver in diecast racing. Oh, come on, that's debatable. And we all know that Ted already has a celebrity crush, and that is numbskull. Why limit to myself when I can have two? Wait, what? No, Ted. You don't want to get involved with this guy. Involved? I just want to learn his secrets. Now bring me a hammer. Ha, as much as I'd like to crack open that car, we better leave it intact until the end of the race. Moving into lap nine, sitting in pole position is James Ironbeard, driving for Ironbeard Customs, and from what Ted tells me, his beard is pretty divine. Yep. And yet again, Blue Line already moving out to the front, not giving anyone a chance. Through the turn, it looks like Blue Line takes first place. Oh, he's really out of control. Oh, no. James Ironbeard had enough of that and sends him off the edge. James continues to lead. Arlo challenging a back and forth race to the finish. Oh, we have contact. And James Ironbeard takes first place. Very close finish. What a race. Oh, that crash. It was terrible. Don't you worry, Elise. If we know anything about Blue Line, the guy's got a thick skull. He's going to be just fine. Oh, EP, you're so sweet looking after me like that. You're probably right. He is the toughest driver I know. Uh, I don't think I said toughest, but um, anyway, I did send Ted up to the top of the mountain. He's going to get him back up on his wheels. I think we'll be back to the racing in no time. Oh, no. What? I'm pretty sure I just saw Ted leave with a hammer in his hand. Ugh, that's not going to be good. Let's get you all fixed up. Oops. Ugh, that is the last time we let Ted out of our sight. <laughs> yeah, we can definitely agree on that one. Moving into lap number 10, sitting in the pole position is Arlo, a.k.a. Batman. Let's hope he put on his utility belt because he's only one point away from taking this from Blue Line. Batman always beats Superman. Drivers make their way down the mountain. Blue Line is pushing James Ironbeard. Arlo makes his way to the front. Sneaky Bob right behind. Third place, James Ironbeard. Through the turns, Bob hot in the tail on Arlo, pushing... Oh, Bob takes first place. Wait, no. 
Terminated. Bob goes down. What just happened? Arlo's in first. Second place, blue line. Jeez, what is that, a quad DNF? Yikes, you sure don't see that every day. It's hammer time. No, Ted, you back away from that hammer. You've done enough. Sorry, Ted. Take a look back on this replay. Keep your eye on that yellow IndyCar. Sneaky Bob, as he comes out of the 270 turn, a long drift, but he can't hold it, rolls it over, and Arlo and Blue Line are fortunate enough to make the pass. I do believe the other three drivers got stuck behind the pileup. What a mess. Uh, -huh, EP, I'm pretty sure Ted just powered down. Come on, Elise. Can you blame the guy? I mean, you hurt his feelings. Oh, that wasn't my intentions. He was just being really naughty. Don't worry, I'm sure he'll be back before the end of the show. Take a look at those scores. Blue Line and Arlo tied for first place with only two more laps to go. Lap number 11, sitting in the pole position is Sneaky Bob looking for redemption, and to his right is Arlo. This is going to be an interesting final two laps. Arlo has a good start off the line, but here comes Bob to reclaim his pole position, slipping on by through the turn into the burge. Bob takes first place, second place Arlo, third place Ironbeard, fourth place Blue Line into the 270 turn. Bob in reverse. Oh, and we have a pile of three cars battling it out. Arlo survives, rounding the last turn. Here comes Sneaky Bob to take first, second place Arlo, and third place Blue Line. Now, before we get into the last and final lap, let's break it down. Currently in the lead, Arlo with 47, Blue Line with 46, and Sneaky Bob with 41. Now, in order for Bob to take the win, a lot of things are going to have to happen in his favor. So it is a long shot. But taking a look at Arlo and Blue Line, if I understand correctly, regardless of where they finish in the race, really all they have to do is beat the other, and then they're crowned king of Pike's Peak. Well, look who's back. Let's do this. Our last and final lap, 12, sitting in the pole position is Ned Munson. And there you can see Arlo and in the back is Blue Line. This is going to be a race for the history books. Bob and Arlo out to an early lead. Ned Munson catching back up. Where's this guy been? Into the merge. Oh, Ned takes second place from Arlo. Arlo drops another position. What is going on? Arlo and Blue Line stuck together. Pile up on the turn. We have contact. My goodness, this is exciting. Arlo continues to lead. Oh, and Arlo beats Blue Line, which means Arlo is your brand new two-time champion of Pikes Peak. Well, congratulations to Arlo. Two-time Pikes Peak champion winner. That's incredible. And you know, I did want Blue Line to win, but that's okay. Arlo, you're not too bad yourself. <laughs> not too bad at all. And we want to give a special shout out to all our drivers who help support the IndyCar tournament. This event would not have happened without your help. Thank you, and thanks to all our fans. Until next time, this is Cyberdyne Chaos. Each driver's spirit